Splatoon 3 is just recently released, and there's a bunch of things people are curious about. So today I'm going to be testing 50 myths in Splatoon 3 and seeing which are real and which are fake. If you enjoy this and want to see more, consider subscribing and leave some more ideas in the comments in case I do a part 2. Let's get into it. Myth number 1, Junior still has a larger ink tank like in Splatoon 2, meaning you can throw two splat bombs with two mains and one sub to sub saver. This is true. Myth number 2, a single trizuka shot can break Big Bubbler if hit at the top. This is false. It takes multiple blasts, even from two different shots. Number 3, if you stand in the middle of Big Bubbler, you're immune from damage. Yup, this is surprisingly true. I'm getting showering flashbacks. I realize showering flashbacks must be a weird sentence to anyone who hasn't been around an early Splatoon 1, but uh, this was a technique where you could be immune to damage by standing in the middle of your wall. You know, like a shower. Okay. Number 4, indirect explosions like blaster shots, explosher hits, and machine works with thermalink. Nope, it still does not. You need a direct hit. Number 5, more similarly, do the bow explosions trigger thermalink, in which, nope, these also do not. Number 6, you can zip cast on top of the main structure on Mako Mart. You can cling onto it, but you can actually go on top of it. So by technicality, this is not true. Number seven, super jumping back to spawn still breaks the power clam. Nope, since there's no actual spawn shield, there's no reason for the ball to break, and so you get to keep it this time. Number eight, splash wall can stop reef slider. This is a definite no. However, the splash wall does actually slow and stall it down, meaning if you're a bit further away, it could be useful for letting it not go as far or just giving you a bit more time to react and get out of the way. So it's somewhat useful. Again, though, this is still going to be marked as false. Number nine, reef slider one shots big bubbler. Yep, so wall stalls it, but big bubble, no problem. Number 10 just wants to know what happens when two reef sliders go past each other, which is nothing. They're both invincible. Number 11, does mist slow down the crab tank in its ball form, in which, yes, it actually does. Number 12, does respawn punisher affect quick respawn and special saber, in which, yes, it's the exact same numbers as Splatoon 2 as seen by this chart here. Similarly, does tactic cooler get negated by respawn punisher, in which, yes, if you have a weapon that doesn't want to go in a lot, it's actually one of the main counters of the special and affects both. Number 14, does the charge slash or swipes do more damage to the Rainmaker shield? It seems a slight preference to the swipes, and that's also probably easier to time. Number 15, can you be hit by a wave from Wavebreaker multiple times? The answer to this is actually no. Both the damage and the location cannot affect you if you've already been hit by the same wave. You're basically immune to it. Number 16, the Splatana Stamper has a slightly longer range one shot. Yup, this is true. Number 17, is squid rolling forward or swimming faster? Even if you did the forward squid rolls perfectly, it's just definitely not faster than actually swimming. It's still nice to get the armor sometimes though. Number 18, which paints more, triple ink strike or booyah bomb? I did a ton of different testing for this and I never got a super consistent number, but tri strike at its highest painted 101 points. So I thought there's no way booyah bomb paints more than that since it's only one blast, but surprisingly it actually painted a total of 105 points. I think these strikes and booyah bomb probably paint the same if they're used perfectly though. Number 19, Zipcat. Ah, damn it, we timed it wrong. Anyway, Zipcaster has armor, not invincibility. True, you can see damage bleed over from the Zooka. 20, does Ink Saver main work on the main weapon special drain from Zipcaster? Surprisingly, yes. For 21, is there a difference between that and the special power? And the answer is actually no, they're the same. This is another one we're testing at right next to each other was a little bit awkward, but the next one is if special power up does affect the arm stretch while well, main saver does not. And the answer to this is yes. You can hear them recall right about here while I'm able to do quite a little bit more before I go back. 23, can Tacticooler cancel an enemy one? Yes. And immediately after 24, can you stand on Tacticooler? Nah, I tried for a while. You just fall right through. It doesn't help at all. Number 25, what happens if no one paints in turf war? The alpha team should usually be given the victory with 0.1%. That or I got insanely lucky. And yep, no one painted. Number 26 is one I assume must be wrong, which is that run speed doesn't affect Splatanas. And it's actually true. Tetsu has three mains of run speed while I have none. And yet, despite that, we move at the same speed in each firing mode. How does this happen? Number 27, like in Splatoon 1, you can use your sub weapon with Trizuka active. And surprisingly, no, you can't. It's a very interesting but weird nerf. Number 28, the buffs from Tactic Cooler only apply after you've actually grabbed the drink. This is true. If it's going toward you, it doesn't count as getting it, and you don't have any effects. Number 29, the shoes you wear in-game can influence your height. As you can see, I can't hit the dummy here. I'm using stick controls so I don't accidentally move it, and when I switch to taller shoes and try it once more, there you go. You can now hit it. So this is confirmed true. Number 30, comeback will always activate when you die. This is false. If you jump off the map, then it does not count. You have to be killed by an enemy. Number 31, inkjet strafe speed is increased when you have Tacticooler. Now, this
this is a bit complicated to explain because inkjet does not actually have a set speed. It's dependent on the weapon you use and it can be influenced by run speed, but the effect is so tiny that even in Tacticooler you barely notice it. Up next was can you eat the inkjet exhaust with vacuum, and while you can, it barely even charges it up. Does sub defense work on specials like bomb defense does? I'm running three mains and only one sub would be enough to reduce this inkjet to killing me in three shots with this explosion, and yet I die in two. No, it does not work against specials at all anymore. Can you still see the Nils statue on Hammerhead Bridge like you could in the direct? Yes, you can, and in fact, it's even easier to see. This has to be one of the coolest visual details I've ever seen. Number 35, you can bubble a bubble. Yes. Number 36, sub power up can increase your jump speed to the beacon like it does with normal subs. Nope, but can special power up? Also no. Unfortunately, no way to influence this beacon here. Can two ultra stamps collide midair? No, and the hitbox still doesn't work, by the way, Nintendo. General question about how the spawn armor works. It is just like ink armor. One shot will break it if it does above 30 damage, over 100 damage will pierce with a cap at 80, and yes, you absolutely can be killed through the spawn armor if something hits multiple times like the Trizooka. Unlike armor, though, there is no knockback. Do negative effects such as Ninja Squid not work when Tactical is active? No, they stack. So you can see with Ninja Squid, I'm still slower than someone without one. Number 41, can Tri Strike hit you if you're under a roof? Yes, this does not function like missile. It does not care about ceilings. In fact, they're even better for hiding the initial marker. Can you zip caster through the Rainmaker shield? Not only yes, surprisingly, but you can do damage to it, meaning it's possible to pop the Rainmaker shield with a zip caster for a funny kill. But can you reef slider through it? Surprisingly, no. You get completely stopped if it's not popped. And last on the special going through things list, can you zip caster onto the Tacticooler fridge? No. In fact, you have to go completely around it. Yup, it blocks it. Weird. Does quick super jump affect your recall time from things like the zip caster and inkjet? Actually, no. It has zero effect on it whatsoever. Does toxic mist reduce the squid roll distance? Well, if you're in the mist, you actually can't squid roll at all because you're just straight up not fast enough. However, if you squid roll into the mist, it looks like it still does the full distance just fine. Can Ink Vacuum absorb Rainmaker shots? Not only yes, but it can actually absorb a ton of them. By the way, if you're curious on more Ink Vacuum interactions, Mellow has a good video on it in the description. Does super jumping back to spawn give you the armor again? No, you are fully susceptible to being camped. Number 49, Ninja Squid completely hides your trail. This isn't true. You can even see it when I loop back around. It lingers for quite some time. And finally, number 50, torpedoes can lock onto you while you're still in your spawn. Uh, yeah, really weird, but you are technically there. You're just immune to all damage. Well, that looks like all I can test for this video. I hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you all next time.